This is the hot potato. This is about AI. So how we use AI and digital marketing to help clients get the best results. That's the loose title. And I prepared a few things to go along with this. So there are some slides and obviously there's the questions that I sent over. And really there's four things we're going to look at, not in a rigid way, but more of an exploration, but why AI matters to us and our agency, its current impact on the industry, the personal, so like how we use it personally and how we should use it. And then the future, so how it will impact industry and wider society. A lot of scope there, but really, I think it's important that we look at AI and see how we are using it, how we should use it, and how it impacts our work and our clients. And so I'm going to switch to a slideshow. What, what are some ways that AI is impacting your work, anyone? Just call out a couple of things. I think it saves time in a lot of ways. Gives you a different perspective on something. Well, it's like an extra, an extra brain that you can run ideas past. Yeah. So I actually used a Wix AI tool like three years back, so two and a half, three years back. And back then it was not this proficient. Like I used it yesterday again just to see what it looks like, and it actually is now quite better. So. I mean, obviously it's improving and we can see that how it is changing things. So that's something that I explored recently. Yeah, it helps for me for content creation you know, when creating landing pages or blogs or you know, creating meta description, things like that. It does help or writing just basic emails when I can't find the words to explain what I try to me. Just the second I, like they write it, so it helps me explain myself better. I found it super handy for research preliminary research, answering specific questions that are just very annoying on search engines, brainstorming and editing and revisions of things, and just producing copy and content at scale. It's really good. And I think the future use for scaling in an agency will be pretty imperative. Yeah. So I think you've hit on a few things here. So productivity, efficiency, uh, output or content creation. Uh, I've got some stats and some interesting figures about how it's used in the industry and how it's perceived. I think those are the big ones right now, but it's also impacting on us in other ways. So I feel like with client relations and clients hearing about AI all the time, it gives us an opportunity to address something and almost uh, a curiosity uh, that they have about how it's going to be used in marketing and how it can be used to help build their businesses better. And, and I think that is something that's happening right now. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this crunch and learn on AI and not just because it's trendy, but it's because there's a new kind of curiosity about what we do because of AI. And I think, you know, there's risks there, but there's also a way to embrace it because Obviously, clients are probably thinking, how can I use it to save money and grow my business, but also how they should be using it. And we can be the guide there. It doesn't have to replace us uh, because it, obviously digital marketing is overwhelming and confusing, as we mentioned a lot on our new website. Um, but in the future, there's huge macro implications about how AI will impact digital marketing as a whole. SEO, ads, web development, is it just going to be, is it going to replace web developers? There's some big questions here and ones that we have to prepare for. Otherwise, you know, our future's at stake. It is an existential threat as well, unless we learn to adapt and, and grow with it. And then there's bigger things like how AI impacts society, politics, work, science, all sorts of crazy stuff. Just a quick litmus test here. Does AI excite you or scare you? Excite. Uh, both. Both. It's very fun. It's very fun. Like, I think I'd be very excited by it if I had, you know, if there was zero threat to a business. Like, if I was a plumber, you know, that's who it should excite the most because it's, I don't, it doesn't really affect, but it does really affect that plumber potentially on the marketing side and lead generation side of his business. 
So that would be more, you know, if you just were a billionaire or a plumber or something, it's like, it's not, but there's two flip sides. It's like very exciting. The opportunities are extremely exciting, but then the threat is also scary. Like there's going to be marketing agencies that are just like wiped out because of this. And then there's me marketing agencies that like figure it out and they'll really, and they'll get a bigger slice uh, of, of a pie of the same size pie. So we got to be on that side of things and. Yeah, it's not clear right now what what's going to happen exactly. So that's a scary part of it. Archie, do you want to say something about that? No, yeah, I was just saying that it doesn't scare because anyway, we have to keep learning new things and uh, adopt to what new is coming. Uh, and I also, and maybe I could be wrong, but I think that it cannot completely replace humans. Like it can make it easier for humans and for people who can utilize that uh, in a better way so yeah it more of excites me but it scare me scares me that how good can it be like that part scares me uh, but uh, as a perspective of like our work like what we do that for that part it doesn't scare me but on a broader perspective it does scare me that it can do so much so yeah that's it. And you don't know that half of it, Archit. Like you yeah. don't actually realize that all the rest of us, except for you, are AI bots. Yeah. You haven't realized that yet. So that's how scary good it is. Like, Sasha is not a real human. That's just a video projection. <laughs> you can do that. The pictures look scary. The the ones. Let me see. ask you this, Archit. How many of us have you actually met in person? <laughs> <laughs> no, how do you know scary. real people? No, this is getting scary. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Archie's going to bring out the Turing test or the replicant test now for a from Blade Runner to test whether we're actually human or not. Test our memories. All right. But yeah, the scope of this, I guess we've got to whistle down to just our digital marketing, but there is some crazy things to consider. I also wanted to run this from a personal perspective. I don't know about you, but we get set in our ways, yeah, in our daily work life. And sometimes it's hard to be exposed to all the different tools and tips that people are using. And so I, I'm I'm interested to see some of the tools and, and things that you're you're all using individually to see if there's ways that we can individually get more productive and efficient. So uh, I think that's also part of this but from a, a now perspective and a practical perspective. Is there anything that we can introduced to yeah, be more efficient. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on to some quick AI stats. So 87% of organizations worldwide believe that AI will give them a competitive edge. $107 billion is the global market revenue forecast for AI in marketing in 2028. I'm not sure exactly what that covers, but it sounds like a big figure. Uh, and then 16 trillion is the estimated potential contribution of AI to the global economy in 2030. So obviously some big numbers there. Anything that uh, stands out when you hear stuff like that? When I hear 987% of technologies believe they'll give them a competitive edge, I don't believe that's the case. I know it's important and I think a lot of like maybe 87% will lose themselves. Like the company will be a loss because of AI. Because they're not going to be able to keep up to date with AI and whatnot, especially in the digital world, like office work and repetitive tasks, things like that. So, like uh, Iron Man, you know, plumbers, whatnot, could be saved to get a competitive edge. But most companies in this age, I think, will not benefit from it. And even in the industry, like most digital companies will not embrace AI and will fall behind and fail, not give them a competitive edge. I, I just there. Uh, I just think that I would like to see what the adoption rate estimates are because yeah. that's yeah. going to determine what how this is going to go. Because if, if a lot of people start adopting this, then the competitive edge will go away. Because then, if everybody's using it, then everybody has the same edge. Depends um, if they're using it correctly, right? And that's yeah, and yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah, like when you say AI, using AI, is it just using how to use prompts, like how to enter prompts, or what goes on in the back end? Because yeah, everyone could use the prompts, but like what's actually happening in the back end can you keep up with that and understand that and readjust it so it helps your customers or your current needs whatnot so you modify the ai not by just prompt so that's the competitive edge that like i, I, I don't know what kind of code language it uses right 
that that's how far I'm in this industry, but I still am behind. And yeah, it, it is going to be very competitive and people need to get understand both the full scope, the back end and the front. I think it's also... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Ira. Oh, sure. I think it's also how you apply. It's like how you apply it is super important because it's like there we have very very specific what are those called uh, use cases for a specific industry and so this is going to be the competitive edge our ability to identify challenges and uh, ways to get more efficient for a marketing agency for um, home services or for landscapers so i'll, I'll like a, a good example of this from one of the interviews for this grant that we did was the woman had identified an issue that we actually have right now. It's like going through um, call rail or Twilio and having to listen to calls to figure out if they're quality leads. Like, this is something I actually did like the day before. I went through all the thing and was like, try, and that took me a while to go through. And so she had spoken about like lead quality and she was like, oh, I'm exploring how to, and I don't know how far, I think she had like done it or anything, but she's like, I'm exploring how to make a, like a little GPT bot so that it scans call transcriptions and can identify if they're quality or spam automatically without me having to listen to every single call. So that's a great, like the use case is how do we save time on having to listen to every single one of these calls or read every single one of these forms? Like then how can we utilize AI because Call transcriptions are produced. They can be produced by AI or summarized by AI. And if you could get something to scan for keywords. Anyway, that might be like never something that pans out or that we accomplish, but it's a great use case that we can solve with tools that we can then add as a product feature, or we can add on the back end to be way more efficient to cut our costs. And that's so the way we use it, that's the well, you could, you could the, imagine the how Paul Rail might build that functionality in. Yeah, so it's like when you set up your call rail, you give them some, you write out what is a good lead to you. Maybe you give them a few different examples and then chat GPT yeah. analyzes that. And then as incoming transcriptions happen for the call recordings, it, you basically train it up. Maybe you have to go through and say, yes, this was a good lead. This was a good lead. And then moving forward, it just learns what is a good lead, what is a bad lead. And now yeah. AI could be used there. Yeah, and so what? So to position ourselves, a competitive advantage for a marketing agency is a marketing agency that has very well defined challenges and has attempted solutions at it. And maybe the solution isn't there yet, but they'll be able to recognize, and deploy it way quicker if they already know what the challenge is and they've tried to solve it. And so that's where that like curious consultant or troubleshooter kind of mindset comes in. I think. That will help us moving forward. It's a good segue, actually, for the next slide. But I think, Karen, very interesting that you, you, you picked up on this one, because I feel like that shows the interest that people have in AI and how they just suppose that it's going to do well for their business. But it also, it's, it feels to me like the SWOT analysis was built for there's a strengths, there's weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and you could list them out. Yeah, in, in this drops. feels like 2006 when blockchain, not 2006, 2011 when blockchain was about to explode, and then all the stats used to come out about how blockchain is going to change your life. I think it's bigger than blockchain. I think it's oh, it is. almost I'm just saying, bigger I, than the internet. No, no, it's, no, like, it's definitely bigger. I'm saying all the 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 way people are interested in it without yeah. actually knowing about it. That's what I mean. Yeah, that, yeah that's a good point. It is interesting to think, is this going to be a bigger transformation than the internet on society? Yeah. Is it going to be comparable? No, the internet was probably the biggest thing that's ever happened to us. It's almost like, yeah. it's, but AI is built on the internet, yeah? So it's like it's the next exactly. step. I think indoor plumbing was like the biggest thing that happened to us. <laughs> sure, almost yeah. Sure. Making, making, making fire was pretty good too. Yeah. We all <laughs> Making fire, yeah, that, that. making, uh, okay, making fire. I think that's probably. <laughs> How about the first ever organism that came from the meteor, right? In the in the primordial ooze. <laughs> that was the biggest thing. <laughs> so relevance to us and our commitment to leveraging AI to stay competitive and deliver results. So just a reminder that the heartbeat of our company is our people who are curious consultants, resilient troubleshooters, and lifelong learners. So how does AI, learning about AI and deploying it, relate to this? Uh, so these are our three 
sort of personas that we all should uh, exhibit and inhibit. Uh, I think AI and deploying AI is relevant to all three of these, yeah? So I think that's also important. So it's part of our mission to embrace AI. And maybe we can be that guide that helps it become a competitive advantage for our clients. Okay. And then our brand stands for five things. Empathy, flexibility, consistency, transparency, and results. How does AI and, and the whole AI conundrum affect what our brand stands for? Any ideas? Can you say that again, Andy? Oh. So how does AI impact like what we stand for if those are the five things that our brand stands for? And lots of stuff here, like flexibility is like our ability to pivot to new tools and technology and use it to the benefit of our clients. Results is pretty obvious. Um, transparency and empathy, I think, are now written into our new end where we understand how confusing digital marketing can be. It's going to get a lot more confusing with the AI getting into and everybody's trying to sell you every tool. Here is, and I have some ideas further down for the question. Here's how we, how, here's how we explain, here's how we adopt AI. This is our process of, of utilizing a new tool and, and here's how it can be helpful for you. And we'll be very transparent in the consulting part of that as well to tell you, you know, whether or not something is good or bad, how we use it, how we protect data, stuff like that. I, I wanted to outline some tools that we use that have AI components built in now. So I think all software is trying to make use of AI or use it as a market employee, you know, get more people, oh yeah, we're embracing AI, our tool now has AI. And, and some of it is more valid than others and, and some of it is better built out already than others. But yeah, obvious tools, ChatGPT, Jasper, uh, Fathom, which we are using to record this uh, meeting with and that will create AI notes from it. There's also Otto, uh, Surfer SEO, Google Workspace now, like what we use for all our documents, has an AI assistant built in now that I haven't really used, but I don't know if anyone's tried it. Monday.com has AI now, so it'll analyze your boards, make suggestions to improve your productivity. Adobe is obviously using it very well. You know, Photoshop and some of the things you can do now are, are nuts. Yeah. But, uh, and then Canva has similar tools. They're trying to do things like the Google Pixel does, like Magic Eraser, things like that. Uh, so you can just get rid of things in a photo. Uh, Yoast, this is an interesting one. So now if you buy the subscription to Yoast for SEO titles and descriptions, it will suggest which SEO titles and descriptions to use based on an analysis of data and your page. So the, everyone's trying to take advantage of AI and, and get you to you know pay for the subscription. But yeah, MailChimp as well as another one. And then Keywords Everywhere actually has a plugin to ChatGPT now. So you can go to ChatGPT and the keyword, I was shocked. I just saw their like, logo there. I'm like, how's that there? And it's actually built in when you have the Chrome extension and you go to go to ChatGPT for keywords everywhere. All sorts of SEO tools now that interplay with ChatGPT. Are there any other big ones here that I haven't put down that, that you use? You've missed a few of my favorites. So I love, obviously I love Midjourney. I've incorporated it in a couple of blogs and stuff, but more just like to make people laugh on Slack. So it doesn't, I need to learn like scale that and then I really liked, I liked Gemini and I just like, I kept hearing how this, what, what's it called? Like the woke founding fathers or whatever had shut down Gemini. And so I went back and cause I checked it out like last week when we originally had this and then I went back and now and it seems to be still up and running fine. So I like Gemini for asking like Google ads questions for asking anything Google related for keyword research cause it's live and Google has all the Google data that it goes through. So it's really good for Google related things. What what is Gemini? For those who don't know, Gemini is is a new um, version of Bard, which is Google's AI. It's like ChatGPT, Google's version. Oh, interesting. Why did they rebrand it to Gemini from Bard? They just updated a Bard took it to the level of ChatGPT, and yeah. then I don't know if you heard this. <laughs> they they obviously overcorrect for. For, for, for not offending people, uh, conservatives in the U.S. got really up in arms because 
they were searching, oh, show me an image of the founding fathers or something. And then it shows like all black founding fathers. <laughs> so they had, there was this huge controversy and then Google got in trouble for that. But it's just, it was so overblown. Like just they're, they're beta testing. Yeah. Like, embarrassed. Like, and they're, they obviously that's better uh, than like, having it spit out some like Nazi paraphernalia or something. Like they, they're also going to overcorrect and then gradually like reel that down. But uh, anyway, Gemini, I really like Okay. Gemini. So we're obviously going to go into the tools and things in your little segments, but any anything else that stands out as being uh, absent from this list that you use? I use Microsoft Copilot a lot. It's more oh. business oriented, and it has an app, so it's you know, and it connects like the internet with GTP four for free. So it's very convenient in my phone. I have some match scores or upcoming games or you know, something work related like all those. It does help. So you use it like an assistant? Kinda, yeah. It remind me things like when to walk whiskey sometimes or this shot for something. Yeah, it does a little better Siri kind of thing. So it gives you notifications and whatnot as well. Yeah. I guess that's what's, that's what's missing. That's all our phones have AI built in now with Google Assistant and um, Siri and all that stuff. So maybe maybe that's the one thing that we probably use without even knowing we're using. And the one thing we all use and is going to get fed whatever the AI does is search engine, right? Yeah. That's, that's the scary part of AI is the things that you don't know are automated or you know they're automated, but you're just taking it for granted. Yeah. Well, there's already parts of the Google search algorithm that probably humans can't properly explain that an AI yeah. takes care of, yeah, which... I guess that's all about the, the threat that AI can have to us. Are we actually in control of this beast? But yeah, okay. Uh, I think we're going to get into like your favorite tools and things uh, in a minute. I'm just going to run through a few AI stat. AI adoption by marketing professionals, 50% already using AI, 29% plan to use it in the future, 11.5, not sure yet, not plan to use AI also known as the Luddites, 9.5%. Uh, Any Anything strike you there as being strange or something that sticks out? Yeah, this is good. Like 50% of the market is soon going to be free enough for us to get those clients. <laughs> Although we might be in the plan to use AI in the future section because we're all using it to various degrees, but we don't really like a cohesive strategy as an agency. Maybe that's what, what this is about. Maybe we need an AI strategy and we need to formulate it. Oh, we need it like ASAP. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Top AI marketing use. Data analysis at the top. Content creation, 44.5%. Customer service and support, 38.5%. Uh, then going down this, social media listening, generating campaign ideas, target audience selection, translating text into different languages, image creation, campaign personalization, predicting consumer behavior, and then I do not currently use AI. You know what I don't like about some of these things is that group everything under the term AI, but some of these are rules. And some of these are just like, like social media listening and brand awareness. That's typically that existed before we didn't call it AI. You know what I mean? Some of this stuff is, I don't know if I would classify it as artificial intelligence. Yeah, so, so, so I always get, so, so that, that's also one thing I'm not a fan of right now in the media. Like if you read a, read a TechCrunch thing, it's like AI is going to be the thing. Of it. like, it's like you wanted me to read the article, but it's actually about a platform you've been working on like 10 years and it's a new feature. Like if then, like you set up rules that are better. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that because it's just, I just put on my notes like that Canva magic eraser, eraser thing I've been using for a while. And it's just, okay, uh, a company doesn't use any AI. Then they put a little chat bot or they adopt one feature or something. And then all of a sudden you're using AI because you're using Canva or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's, I mean, it might be overstated or it might be understated because those people that say they're not using AI or they plan to use it in the future are actually using it a ton. They're using it in their Gmail for auto for X and for different things. And they're using it in, you know, various tools like search engines where now they have the descriptive AI is like built into Google search. And they're doing it for, you know, keywords anywhere and all these tools that like adopt it and don't tell the people. So yeah, it's either overstated or understated. It's very hard to tell. So that, yeah, definitely a downside there. So like what is well, the definition like, of use of AI in, in these tools? 
everything has everything has a, like there were algorithms for 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 decades that you could point 20 years ago and say this this is like a self-learning algorithm or something based on a small subset of data and it's analyzing this one thing based on this other like set of data and you could call that ai i guess it's it's, it's such a sliding scale of just how much data it uses and how much it relies on predictive models and how much it leans on machine learning and all this other stuff so i, I don't think this is this yeah professor you know, one of our first clients you know what he talks about is basically it's not about a computer having consciousness it's about having a huge data set that then it can analyze and predict rules or, or summaries based on that and i think that's what's that's what AI is right now. Yeah. It's the ability to analyze huge data sets and then predict something out of it. And you can see that whether it's text or whether it's images, you know, how Adobe wants to analyze all different images and then change something up based on what you want it to do. But is, does that make it AI? The fact that it can analyze these huge data sets and then predict what you want it? Uh, That's problem. why it's a sliding scale because the size of the data set isn't the key indicator because Google has way more data than OpenAI or analyzes way more data and it's live data. And for my money, ChatGPT is still much better than Gemini across like a bunch of metrics that you would measure for, for AI. So like that's one input. Another input is just like the algorithm. Another input is the blah, blah. Yeah, it's total sliding scale, I think. You know what I think? I think it's prompts that, I mean, it's not that I think, it's prompts that are going to change all this. So it's basically all of these, I think that's the thing that is going to happen is you're not going to need to know a lot about data analysis. You're just going to learn how to ask better question. And that's, I think that's going to be the future of AI is going to be all simplification for the human. So you basically, you will not know how to use Adobe. You'll just tell Adobe what you want what kind of logo and where things need to move is going to be way more like a content management system, which is a little scary, I think, but I get it. So this is where I think AI is going to go. Uh, but right now I'm like, I, I'm not a fan of prompts. Talk hey, to too much. Hmm? Here's how that's crazy. You can get AI to write your prompts for you. <laughs> well, don't spoil my presentation later. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, let me keep going. Let me keep okay. going. There's a couple more. Top AI benefits for marketing. Ability to analyze data quickly. Automation. Increased personalization and user experience, which seems uh, ironic. Yeah. Improving decision making. Uh, more targeted ads. Better insights. Generating leads more efficiently, increase customer loyalty, enhance customer engagement. Sure. Yeah. One Anything? thing to point out here is they're all be done by different tools. Even currently, they're all done by different tools. So even people like plumbers or home services people, they would need us to provide that expertise to tell them, hey, for this, you need to use this kind of tool, this, this kind of tool kind of tool. Even then, there won't be like, hey, there's digital marketing dot AI. They go and everything is done all in place. I think there's always going to be separate tools because bring, bringing everything together will be a lot more complex and scarier because it will have too much control. So that's also one thing like Elon Musk talked about robots, why they have, they wanted to build like vacuums and coffee machines. They all separate. They all have their own AIs or scanners, whatnot. But they keep the tools separate. I don't want to have one single robot that's capable of doing everything in the house. So I think with that in mind, like, like that, these tools will always keep separated and we'll have you know, their experts for you know, one AI will be expert for writing content, another one for image, right? So they won't be the same content, I think, or same tool. So that's also yeah, a great one. Yeah. Help us with marketing. Maybe it's the agency's job to uh, bring them together, make them converge into a solution for a particular industry or client. Right, that's yeah, that's exactly what, what we need to figure out. Yeah, That's what we were already doing, Ira, with like Sizzle AI and automating it with Looker Studios and Analytics and Google Ads. So you're basically helping make that make sense by bringing it all together while you're using all these stuff, but they don't know what's going on in the back end. We use call rails and you know, transcripts and chat, uh, we do web chats and also with many different tools, but yeah, 
we are bringing it all together. So that could be a big value to add as a marketing agency. Not really AI, but Sizzle does have AIs where you could have virtual assistants, like for chat. And then you could still connect that to Looker Studio. So we track that. And so we could do systems that could actually tell us and provide, maybe create a Looker Studio data that could tell them that or something. I don't know. But that's what we add as a value, I think. Yeah. I think the big roles of AI here, are analyzing data for us, because there's so much data with digital marketing. So using it for that and then content creation, you can obviously create a lot very fast and very efficiently. But again, you still need a driver, don't you? You still need someone to control things and make sure the ship is heading in the right direction. But okay. AI for personalized marketing. Oh, this was a questionnaire about, does it matter to you as a consumer or as a customer, if AI has been used to personalize your journey more? And 78% said that it's fine. 5.5% 5, 5 .5 said, no, I don't want AI to be involved in my consumer journey. Uh, so I think, you know, people are very open to its use uh, in society and, and in the market. Uh, okay. Let's get into more interesting stuff, the personal, and, and we're going to do some breakout rooms. We'll do pairs. So what is your favorite video or resource you've seen about AI? And then question two is what is your favorite AI tool and why? And what we'll do is we'll have a little breakout five minutes. I'll have some chats. Uh, I'll do it randomly and then we'll come back and you'll be able to present uh, to the group uh, what you've chatted about. Well, Fathom, we are going to leave you for a minute and we're going to do a breakout room. Uh, assign automatically three create okay open all room <laughs> it's funny assign oh. a button to your room but not i thought I, I thought it was just going to be me and i have it like oh that's funny <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite video or resource you've seen about AI? I, I like the one, I think it was Carly that posted it that we all watched like way back when, when they talked about the AIs, they talked about, it was the same guys that did the social dilemma, social media dilemma, and they did it for AI. I really liked that. I thought that was really uh, a good video. What's his name? There's two of them. There's two guys. Really good. The same, same guys that did the social dilemma, there's, and there's two of them. One, one guy, and I like the... Well, you, you kind of get like one guy is like the talker, the other guy is like the, the brain guy, right? You know? Yeah. Just doing a search, it doesn't say who it is. Social dilemma, like brain guy. Uh, Tristan Harris, that's it, yeah. The Center for Humane Technology, that's it. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. What, who did he work for before, though? Was it him or was it the other guy? One of them worked for somebody. They were inside, they were inside the, the machine. Yeah, there's all, uh, Justin Harris, I'm pretty sure he works at Meta, doesn't he? Oh, no, he's at Google. 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 And then the, the, that there's that other one, yeah, Jaron Lanier. He's always talking about like, the dangers of social media and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And, and then he's run by AI, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Really what, what, what was it? Was that called the AI dilemma? Yeah, I think is what it was called. Yeah. Was that yeah. It's, it's really interesting when you, you hear about things like, you know, for example, TikTok, right? Like how China has banned, like you're only allowed to get scientific like, and educational things on TikTok in China. And that's who invented it and that's who made it. And yet, when they go to the US, it, they, they put their algorithm to, to high, like stupid, dumb stuff, like people doing dumb challenges. I mean, it's super interesting how they like, how the AI, yeah. how they adjust the AI to yeah. uh, say different culture, you know, and how they want to you know, manipulate, I guess you could say, the people's user experiences. Yeah, this is a danger, right? Mm -hmm. it, it leads itself open to mass manipulation or like nationalistic interests being pushed through technology. Yeah. For sure. How do you find it with your kids, with your girls? Do you limit what they see or do you? Yeah, so they don't have access to social media. They don't have phones. We're not, they're not allowed phones until high school. Does, does that affect their, does that affect their social life though at all? And, and which is what all the people who work in Silicon Valley do. Yeah, they mm -hmm. try and keep technology away from them uh, because they're all designed for dopamine hits and getting people addicted and all that stuff, which comes from that, yeah, the social dilemma. 
Um, I think a lot of it is just education, yeah, about like how to use technology, some of its dangers. But you're right, they just want to get access to this stuff and use it for to show their peers that they're ahead of the game. Question two, what is your favorite AI tool and why? I would, well, I would have to say the one I use the, well, the one I use the most is Loom. I really like, uh, but my favorite is probably ChatGPT, just because I really like how it can quickly, like I can take, you know, a summary of notes from, from a client and just say, okay, write the prompt, you know, as an expert or as a whatever in this, you know, summarize it in like a two paragraph email that I can send them on about our meeting. Lays up just like that, a perfect one, saves me 30 minutes of trying to craft uh, an email. Like the one I use the most is Loom, I think, because they have settings that now where they'll summarize everything you said. They can do one where they can just automatically cut out any pauses in there to edit the video. I haven't tried that one just because I'm too afraid that it's going to mess it up. So I still do it manually, um, but it'll put headers to the video. I mean, they're not perfect, but getting pretty good. You, know, you still have to edit some of them, but it gives you a really good, um, saves mm -hmm. you a lot of time. Because I can just copy paste in the email, put the, put the video and well, you probably see it. Yeah. Say, in this yeah. video, I'm talking about this, blah, blah, blah. And that's I in video, it takes me like 20 minutes, you know, instead of writing a complete personalized email, trying to explain what I'm going to explain in the video, it saves me like once yeah. time. You can imagine how all these different software products, it's almost like an arms race for them. It must be a lot of pressure for like people who work at Loom or compared to their competitors. How can we use AI that's better and, and more accurately? Yeah, and that's the thing too. You said everyone's in a rush now, right? It's like an arms race and they're not properly testing it. And you're seeing all these crashes and you're seeing like, now you're sick for some. Ira, I see bad, I'm looking at him. Ira loves Bard, right? But that's one of the worst ones to use for like Google Ads. Like if you like ad copy, none of it fits and they'll add like emojis and stuff. And that's all stuff you cannot use in Google Ads. So you're like, this is a Google product and it still can't come in how to write ad copy for Google Ads. And ChatGPT is actually better at that than than yeah. they are. It's just because yeah. it's beta, because they're trying to get it so quick. Yeah. Cool. Are you, Andy? Yeah. I'm are still you? a traditionalist. Yeah, I, I like ChatGPT. I use it for all sorts of things. At, at crazy things like like now you can actually use images and things so for example you can take a picture of your liquor cabinet and say what's the best cocktail you can make me from this <laughs> now that is a good use of ai that's what i, I can get behind that <laughs> <laughs> so that is how i use chat gpt one so, night or is, it, or like... is that one of the is that one of the dangers of ai should we put that on the dangers <laughs> <laughs> No, it's funny how these little ways of using it, you know, stand up as, as like being a good use case, but and it's, yeah. and it's, it's amazing that someone that's there because someone actually thought of that. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I know. So, so yeah. I had all these weird, like different non-related liquors and some soft drinks, some ginger or something. And I was like, what's the best cocktail you can make me from this? Give me three examples. And it came up with like this really good whiskey ginger combination, like different whiskeys that you would never think of mixing, you know, like an American burn with some PT scotch. And you're like, really? That sounds like sacrilege. Yeah. And, and uh, anyways, it was great. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how it can be used in, in ways that, yeah, and that's not related to digital marketing at all. But anyway, uh, we'll go back to the main area and then I'll invite people back. All right. Okay. Leave room, leave break. So the funny thing was, Fathom went to a breakout room with Sam, and I wasn't invited. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was my partner. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. I'm like, yeah, it's fitting. She's going to be in an AI tool sitting here. <laughs> Cool. Sasha's group, are you with Archit? Do you want to tell us uh, your answers? Go ahead, Archit. Okay, Sasha. So, yeah, Sasha's uh, favorite AI tool is yet to come. He basically uses chat GPT for some things, and then he also uses some command prompts to basically uh, Google Assistant or Siri, uh, but nothing more than that as of now. Uh, so that was what I got from him. And then uh, what was the fa favorite AI video uh, that he watched recently was, again, that how AI can uh, be scary. And I think, like, Sasha, please uh, elaborate. Like, 
what exactly was that video? Yeah, no, I was just saying I, I like that video because it just showcases uh, that uh, it's us who are in control and as humans are horrible beings. Um, we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, there's not, not a worse animal on this planet. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, and then uh, actually I also chat about the video he watched, which I also saw, which is the one about fake female profiles on Instagram and models that look real. Uh, and it looks like a human, acts like a human, and all this, all the eye generated. Um, like a Instagram profile gained some 2, 2.5 million followers. Uh, basically, it sh shows that the model is traveling around the world of pictures from around the world and then later on it was revealed that it's not a real person that is being shown and it was all AI created. So yeah. Map fishing has just gone to the next level. But I'll disagree with you that Sasha on one thing. Andrew and I will disagree that uh, humans are not the worst animal in the world. It's stingrays is the correct answer to that. <laughs> I heard dolphins are a bit of a and if they if dolphins had hands we'd be in trouble. They've got blowholes. <laughs> they're like they spiteful that. they're jealous and all that yeah, we're going to start on an apex apex predator there's nothing that beats an orca that is the apex if you see them hunt and what they do i don't think this and if they were land mammals they won't land we'd all be dead like we would be their servant That's i just watched a video of it eating a, a great white shark, hunting a great white shark. Nothing. Like, anything like that this. hunts a great white shark is pretty scary it's not just hunts it it's like a toy to it it's nothing. I'm just going to eat a little. When I was in South Africa, man, there was all these great yeah. white sharks that were just dead on the shore because uh, orcas would come and eat their liver. Just kill them, eat their liver, let them die. And you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was I eating their it. liver. That was the, like that was what it did with the great white. It ate its liver. Their yeah. apex. Yeah. That's I think, some, I think the AI in our meetings just did off somewhere. Yeah, it's like, I'm tired of this. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> can, can someone re re recalibrate the Sasha bot, please? <laughs> Arch, Arch is like very afraid now. Now I'm starting to question my reality. <laughs> I, have, I haven't actually met these people. Video for now I can answer that it's scary. Uh, just, just, just to go back, not talking about dolphins and whales and everything else, porpoises. What Arch was saying was interesting because I have seen now people offering classes on how to build your own AI generated like YouTube channel or AI generated Instagram model or stuff. So now they're actually, they're offering courses on how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was telling yeah, right. one, one, of, one of the things I read is where AI is gonna have the biggest impact is the consumer behavior and, oh, sorry, uh, it's gonna have on consumers. And, uh, it's called the loneliness market, like loneliness marketing. So people are gonna create relationships with AIs because we already, you know, way do that uh, because the more connected we are, the lonelier we are. So they, that's the market that they, it's, it's like a gray market because, you know, there's underlines of sex and adult themes with it, but that's the market that they think is going to explode. Yeah. It's, it's very getting... sad, that side of things. It's so sad. Yeah. It's already it's happening, man. It's it's happening. Too, for like young men are the biggest target of these things. Like the percent of young men who like aren't, um, who are like using like bots, like have a, have an actual they're in love with an AI bot or something is just like through going through the roof. It's crazy. They have, that is, that's a big issue right now in Japan, I believe, where they're saying that they're embracing this loveless society, you know, the young people or sexless society. And they're more like, yeah. yeah. It goes back to the her movie, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. Movie. It's exactly that's what it is. Yeah. All right, Ira and Khan, over to you. What did you uh, talk about? Oh, I could share, yeah. I'll share my screen. Okay, so I have a couple guys like love it that you guys could check out. So these two guys I like, like this Matt Wolf, okay, and this this Futurepedia. Uh -huh. So basically, what I like about these is they every week this guy comes out with AI, all the AI stuff. So I think you know where like Khan alluded to, where we're going to be very valuable to clients is like our proposition of digital marketing is confusing is going to change soon to digital marketing is insanely confusing and what our job should be is like what this guy's job is for us he goes through all the ai stuff figures out what's free figures out what's good what's bad explains it all in like a pretty succinct video and we can say okay four of those things might be good for our agency we try four of those and then we find one of them 
is very good for either efficiency in our agency or can be applied to a specific challenge with one of our clients. So our job as an agency and our value moving forward is parsing, and we already do this, We, have, by the way, it's not like just an I thing. It's like figuring out what are very useful tools, like Google Ads is useful for getting leads, Looker Studio is useful for reporting. Figuring out all that, how is it useful for us for growing our agency and efficiency in, internally? And how is it useful for our clients? So I like these guys because I don't have to do the work of going through all the stupid new like AI apps. They do that for me. They have little lessons like this guy has a lesson like a chat GPT masterclass. So he outlines like every feature, how you can use it for efficiency and marketing. So I check out those like this Futurepedia and then this Matt Wolf always kind of coming up and I've done a few of this little thing. And then the second thing on the favorite tool, like I just love, as you guys know, I love Midjourney and combining Midjourney with chat GPT. So Sasha's prompt thing. Um, let's see if I can share just Midjourney. Yeah. Okay, so basically, I, you don't even have to write the prompt. Like, I'll put a prompt into ChatGPT4, and I'll just say, a plumber with a phone. So, say I want to use this image for a blog on, like, how we use call tracking for plumbers for our agency. Like, this is efficiency internally part of things. I put plumber with a phone, and then ChatGPT spits out this, and I just give it a few, like, parameters. Like, you have to mention what camera, blah, 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 blah. So it says, imagine a scene where a post plumber is kept. Wait, wait, what do you mean ChatGPT spit out things? Can you say that again? Yeah. So I go to ChatGPT and I give it parameters. I say, I want you to generate a descriptive description uh, with, you have to use a camera, you have to use nouns, you have to use whatever. And then it will do the description for me, Holy which shit. I then put into MidJourney. And then MidJourney creates ultra realistic photographs like this one. Fuck. So, and then for why is this good for us? Because we could stick this in a blog and it's almost, it's almost real looking now. Like I can identify a couple of things here that aren't real. like, and maybe a plumber would see this and be like, Hey, that's not supposed to be connected there. Like for all intents and purposes, now you can do like a photo realistic image combining APT with imagery. So this is an example of how we have a very specific efficiency thing like how do we get uh, great photos for our logs to drive seo traffic and then okay we just put plumber we have all these parameters that i created it spits out very very detailed use a nikon d850 camera equipped under lens and an f 2.8 aperture to achieve a crisp focus on the plumber's face with a shallow depth you can see how it blurs background a bit there yeah it's awesome how for that. do you what do you put into chat gpt to get that description plumber how, how, so I of, put in, I'll show you what, I, what I've done. We should do a master, an IRA's master class on mid journey. It's like a crunch and learn. So I put in, I'll just read it. Okay. Let me, maybe I can show you guys. It'll be easier. Okay. Uh, okay. This is very interesting. Ira. Thanks for teaching us about AI tools and how to do this. So this is, so this takes a little while. Like I have to research what other people are doing and F around a mid journey, but, but I say, I want you to act as a prompt engineer. You'll help me write prompts for an AI art generator. I will provide you with short ideas, and your job is to elaborate these into full, explicit, coherent prompts for realistic photographic scenarios. Prompts involve describing content. It's useful. Please use nouns and objectives, blah, blah. Then I give them a formula, okay? And then all I have to do is give it a very basic thing. A plumber talking on his phone at a job site. It'll wow. give me two very specific prompt ideas, which I then put into mid-journey. I did one. That was for my friend. Let's go on. Assume those for Dan. Okay, create a prompt for a photo of a bike. Um, and then it did oh. some real cool ones where I did like a bicycle leaning against a door type thing. That was like, you can select aspect ratios. So you have to like teach that. it. You have to teach how you want to speak, like the way you yeah. think. Yeah. Right? But, okay. but it's like Khan says it. You never really have to, you never really have to do anything complex. Our whole job is like finding disparate sources of information. So I basically saw how people were writing prompts on mid journey, what kind of formula. Then I go to YouTube and figure out how they're writing this for whatever chat GPT. Then I put it into chat GPT. Then I test it and I say things like, okay, that was too long. Make it shorter. Oh, that was too, not enough nouns or that didn't mention the camera mentioned that. And then I work it and then I put it into mid journey and then I see what the output is. And then I kind of re refine, reiterate, 
But then say that takes two days. Now I have a, that really great prompt, like that really like it training to be a prompt thing. I can give that to you guys or anybody or whatever. And then we can just like, all we have to do is do it once and it will pop out the like. Now I can just, anytime I just stick in, like all I do now is made my job so easy. I go to chat GPT. I put a con on the streets of Turkey and then it will pop, like do a really rich description. And the con will be on the streets of Turkey. That's how I did all your pictures. I'm like, 35 year old Bosnian man at Joshua Tree. And then that's what it gave me, right? I didn't put a very detailed description, except like I put, you're wearing a black V neck t shirt. It's like you in a V neck. Anyway, yeah. that's my favorite. It totally could be an AI, an, AI, an, AI, an AI thing. I literally have 20, at least 20 black V necks and at least 20 black V necks. That's my description now. Just with one eye on time, I think it's good if we wrap it, wrap this up for on the hour. Uh, Sam, uh, you mentioned about your favorite tools. Do you want to share? Uh, sure. So mine are the same as yours, like the ChatGPT and Classic is one of my favorites. And then uh, Loom. I really like in Loom video now. They've gotten really more AI focused, so they'll do a lot of the. They can do automatic editing for you. Um, they can, you know, they'll automatically generate a highlight, you know, like a like some summary of the notes that you can put in your email. They'll put them. It's not perfect, but it's really good. So I like that a lot. Cool. And then Khan, what was yours? Oh, you mentioned, yeah, your, the Microsoft companion. Yeah, uh, Copilot, yeah. Copilot. All right. I'm really interested in the final question, but let, let's just look at these, the uh, question three and four. I don't think we have time to do breakout rooms, but question three was, what is one way AI has helped you get better results for clients? Question four was, how will AI impact upon your departments, digital marketing in general, and how can we best prepare and adapt to these changes? Let's open the floor. What, what do you have to say to any of these questions? And Ira, maybe you've got something you want to share with us. I don't know if you've prepared. Yeah, I do, but I want to give other people a chance. <laughs> I so. Okay, maybe I'll... Over to you, the floor is yours. Everyone's, uh, yeah. everyone's waiting in anticipation. Okay, so a few things for clients is preliminary keyword research. Um, so for those semantically, semantically related keywords, I use GPT and, and Gemini for that. So this is Gemini, by the way. And so this is how I used it for, for the keywords. So basically, I, I, I just described our exact process. We have three target keywords. We need to track the performance of 20 to 30 semantically related keywords. And then I gave it an example. And then I went through, like messed up the first answer. So I said, no, actually like these five were not good because of these reasons. Um, like Markham Stone suppliers, that wasn't a good one, but a lot of them were good. Why Gemini I think is superior to ChatGPT for this is because it relies, it can query search volumes for keywords through Google because it's built. And then I go through and then blah, blah, blah. And it just pops out this list, right? That's related to the three, our top three focus keywords. And then I put this into SEM rush and then it will pop out all the exact search volumes, competitiveness, everything else. So it's good for like, it, at the very least, preliminary keyword research. Specific and nuanced question. I'll give another like Gemini example. So I asked it a question. Is there a way to add a staff member to Google Ads MCC account but restrict their access so they can only see one of the clients has linked to the account. This was like a nightmare to try and figure out in Google search, but here it just told me exactly what to do. Um, another thing was like for this youth grant thing. In British Columbia, Canada, it's not okay to post and ask for somebody's age. However, if you're hiring for, for a position, that's the, this was like a straight up HR question, and it gave me a very good answer. While age-based discrimination is illegal in Canada under the Human Rights Act, there are specific exceptions for bona fide occupational requirements. I didn't know what this is. So I wrote it into the job description and said, we're asking this question because of this. And I told him and indeed gave us an exception for posting this position wow. because I told them this answer right here. So that's a, a very good example of how you can worry. I'm brainstorming for blog. So this is my only blog. I, I just haven't had time lately, but I really want to get back into it. So this, how to generate more commercial maintenance business for your landscaping company. It uses all the AI images. These are all AI images. Um, now it's going to be better than this. And then also the key takeaways 
like some like a lot of the stuff here like i just asked chat gpt um give me a list of like rf like i just gave it like how to find and secure rfps and it gave me some like nice websites they were all good i've linked those all up maybe andrew you've edited this since but it was really good in like brainstorming editing ideation and images uh, so that's another good way there oh canva magic erase eraser so here's yeah. a new one that i did why work with north shore digital as a as like a thing but i wouldn't really call magic eraser a use of ai it's just like maybe it uses ai technologies but yeah i took our things edited out the background and it's been yeah. andrew doing a, our silly things um yeah so that question three stacking ai an example was like using chat GPT to generate mid journey prompts. So yeah, there's, oh, Google ads. So sorry, one last one for Sam. Um, where was that? I was just playing around with this G3. Okay. So like this character thing, Sam has, is Gemini can do characters. So I said, write me a description about Mark or whatever. It has to be 90 characters or less. It did it. And it tells you how many characters. And so I could say like that, write 10 more, and then it will vary up all the 10 ad descriptions. And I feel Gemini would be very good at doing this because it's going to like rely on a bunch of like Google ads data on what's impactful. So okay. there you go. So you can see there, you see how they're using emoji cons and say that that's illegal. Like, well, you can't use those in Google ads. So that's like, so my thing when I tried to use it, I found that actually the chat GPT was actually better at it than Gemini. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, another way. It gives of, you good ideas, though. Yeah, it's good for ideation with a few like prompts and changes and stuff. You could fix it up, but yeah, so those are a few samples there. Super cool. Nice insights, Ira. Um, it's funny when uh, Adam analyzes this. I think we only work with plumbers and then one landscaper in Markham. <laughs> all the uh, examples that we've used anyone else want to uh, mention how they're using it or how they think it's going to impact their department i think we've covered a lot but any other thoughts okay oh archit this is like my favorite one of the favorite ai tools you guys might have seen it somewhere already but it's basically uh, using photoshop to expand images so i'll share my screen i'll just take two minutes real quick yeah. so basically this is the image let's say and then i can just expand this oh wait a second i'll first this is and then i can just expand this and maybe let's tell him to add a river across and then i'll just hit enter the river going through that <laughs> So Dude, you gave it a really tough one, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what it pops out. That would really be interesting. Good. So there you go. Oh, okay. oh cool. Oh, Beautiful. that's really cool. Yeah. And then if you have three options, you can generate more. So yeah. oh, that's awesome. It did a river there. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. let's say this is one. And then I want to add, let's say, a lion sitting over here. Let's say. So I'll say <laughs> add a lion. So once I do that, and uh, the best thing is that how it blends with the image, like you can uh, basically differentiate or tell that, okay, this is a AI generated image. It just wow. blends into it. So it's crazy. So, oh. okay, this is not the best, but okay. So they're sleeping over here. And so then... this is like a house that Mike Tyson could really get into. <laughs> <laughs> tigers, he likes tigers. Yeah, and so, oh, this yeah. is really cool, man. Because I don't think Mid Journey can do this. You can do spot things, but yeah, this is neat how you can tell it exactly what to do. It does it so fast too. Yeah, and then let's say I just want to turn this into a night view, so I'll just say make it a night sky. I'll just select and then tell him to make it a night sky. So it take a few seconds, and then the results are crazy good. And detail, uh, like attention to details. So you will see here. Just it, it changed the image in this case a little bit, but you see how it added lights over here, <laughs> like it's a night view. Yeah. Cool. This is cool. Wow. <laughs> and I, and I bet that you could ask ChatGPT or you know, about prompts. What are the best? Yeah. yeah. Like descriptive prompt. As the you get, it will get, uh, basically give you 
much better results as well. Yes. Quite okay, good. cool. Uh, final thing for me is like, how can we best become a knowledge management agency where we accumulate all the skills that we're all learning individually and we, we bring that to the collective for us internally, but also potentially like for our clients. What's the best way for us to cement all our knowledge and what what I was learning can help us you know, individually? How do we do that? What what are some ideas? I uh, just a real quick that, that previous question, just real quick. <laughs> I just yeah, wanted to so how will AI impact your department in digital marketing in general? So just as a preamble to that final thing. Yeah, yeah. So here I'm like overall analysis because it is a scary thing and it's like, how, do, how sh might we think about it? So this is kind of how I maybe conceptualize it a bit. So I think on the market demand side, uh, there will still be similar demand at similar fees for digital marketing agencies for home services. I think the demand size, it's not going to, you know, maybe for some companies it will more, maybe less. It depends on like how they use software and stuff. But so businesses and service-based businesses, like always, will still require technical experts and not have the interest or time to try and stay in the front of curve using AI to help their business. They, they can, they're very basic in their use of technology for home services. So if anything, digital marketing experts will become more valuable as the sea of tools just got a lot bigger. So more guidance is required, more personalization is required. So there will still be the same amount of landscapers fighting for the same size of pie. So marketing will always be required as a differentiator for those landscapers. So demand. So supply side, I think is where it gets interesting. So I think is that the spoils will more and more go to agencies that can best understand AI and deploy it most efficiently and have that culture of growth mindset. Just as an example, imagine an agency versus an agency that hasn't done that. An agency that's learned Sora. So Sora is the open AI video, text to video generator. And they deployed it for B-roll for their YouTube videos and client videos, thus saving 50% time and money on video editor. Or maybe the video editor that I hired did that and they, they worked together on that. So they can charge 25% than another agency and make 25% more profit in that example. So another agency has learned how to scale their own blog writing and create three times the number of quality blogs using a process of that I just described, AI research, editing, image creation, double check plagiarism, double check AI generated content. So their SEO content efforts will work three times as fast. Um, same thing as I like Google ads, scaling ads, whatever else, there's a lot of things here. So in other words, in the upper percentiles, the most AI savvy agencies will be getting more fees for less man hours and able to operate more profitably with capital to reinvest in their staff brand and and then landscaping companies plumbing companies theoretically will still have the same margins as they always did so the ability to charge two thousand dollars a month to a meeting size landscaping company will still be in their budget but if you're an agency that can offer 50 percent more services or quality of services instead of an agency that doesn't do that you'll win over those clients that same number of clients same amount of budget so yeah, so I think the disruption of AI, I mean, that money flows to fewer agencies and the differentiators will be what we're talking about now, team cohesion, keenness for growth mindset, not only around AI, but just in general bar, what you started with. The human business consulting element will be huge. The, the people element now, us as pilots and guides explaining things and business consultant, the brand will be big. And then the ability to filter out and efficient, efficiently use AI as a competitive advantage to apply to very specific use cases for the clients that we're after. So anyway, that's just my kind of thoughts on Q4. That's great. Yeah, I, I feel I feel I'll write like, a blog about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has been a long session, yeah, and we perhaps the scope has been too big, but I feel it's important that we discuss this, address some of this. And I think you have just hit the nail on the head, Ira, about how important this is to the future of our agency and how we can be really useful and get better results for clients, but also beat other agencies at this digital marketing game. I know it's not a zero sum game exactly, but yeah, it is definitely helpful if we get really good at AI. So with that in mind, the final question, how do we cement our knowledge? How do we share the things that Ira can do that then we can all learn and maybe be able to reference how to do it, even if we don't have to do it ourselves individually. 
I have some thoughts, but does anyone else? I was going to go ahead. I was going to try to. Go ahead, go ahead, Sam. No, no, it's okay. It's passed. I've been trying to comment on question four. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Question four, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, I've rushed, I've rushed session too much. Go yeah, ahead. A no, I'm I just saying, like, with, with Google Ads, it's all about AI now. It's it's moving to be all about it. So we have to embrace it. We're getting left behind. Yeah. So that... Okay. Any ideas about how we get some uh, knowledge and tips and tricks and things? Start a channel. Just AI. Just to keep, yeah, notes and you know, new tools, whatnot, new strategies. I think we should just be masters of our own domain, guys. And if we notice things that are evolving, we need to be careful that we don't need to be at the forefront of this. That's not our business. We can wait and see. If you have capacity to play with things, I think that's great. But I think we wait and see what uh, what meant and what's going to actually work. Uh, what I'm really worried about, not now, it's not going to affect us, but over three to five years, the evidence I'm reading is consumer behavior, how they, how that's going to change the mindset of how they respond to the new type of ads, how they respond to new type of prompts, how they respond to uh, being continuously blasted with super customized information, because that's the next step, is everything's going to be super customized to you as an individual. So, so that's what I'm worried about for the future, but it's not going to affect us now. So... I think I don't know what the best way is to share this information. So uh, I like this. It's great to learn what, what people on our team are using, but I don't know if another Slack channel is gonna do. <laughs> I don't know what you guys think. I, mean, I like the idea of an AI resources page on our website, and whether we make that private mm -hmm. or whether we make it public, that, that's another question. But that's uh, I, I feel like that's what I'll do from this session. I'll go ahead and create that. And then we kind of take it from there and update it as we want or delete certain things as they change. But I feel like that would be a good step, I think. I, I think it's important to think about this as like AI is very distracting. It's very dis distracting and there's a lot of elements of it that are just, I think you have to think about it as any, like you said, like, like a tool. Is it going to make something better you know, internally, like a process? or faster, or is it just a, a, a distraction? And so this is where I think we need to focus, right? For, for me, like why this excites me is I'm very focused on, you know, more like the back end rather than the front end component of the business. And especially like the, the efficiency and profitability side of the business. So if it takes a staff X number of man hours to create X thing, keyword research, a blog, whatever it is, and we can find a tool that just does the exact same thing three times as fast. I want to incorporate that. Why not? Like that will just make efficiency. So for me, like how I look at this is just like, where can we get, get faster without compromising any quality or making quality better? Or how, how can we do something with more quality in the same amount of time? If it can't do that, it's useless to us. If it can do that, let's adopt and use it because why wouldn't we? But yeah, that's the bottom line. So. I think it'd be useful to have some sort of document. I feel maybe it'd be like at the start, mostly me perhaps like organizing with some contributions. And like we do for our product, we have to, we don't, we've failed in the past a couple of times. We just, oh, let's just quickly use it. We can incorporate this product feature, whether or not we know it's going to work. We have to do like what I'm doing, like, okay, like what Sasha said, masters of our own domain. Like I've been using a very specific use case for say chat GPT and mid journey that has allowed me to write blogs two times as fast. I've written 10 blogs. I know that I could do it faster. I've worked out all the kinks like plagiarism checker and all that stuff. Here's the exact process that I've written up. Now I move that into the company folder. So people aren't distracted with a bunch of things. Right. So that's how we have to do. Same thing with Sam. Like Sam's experimented around with the Google ad stuff. He's worked out the kinks. He knows that it's worse in Gemini. It's better in ChatGPT. Here's the process that he's used. He's tried it on us to start, then a couple of clients, and then he scaled it a bit. Now he has a really set process that he knows works. Now put that on the sheet. So it's like the, the product. Like we put all our brainstorming stuff, then we meet once a quarter, and then we adopt one or two things. We test them, and then it's incorporated into our culture. Mm -hmm. So I think like some process around that would work really well. It, so it's not a distraction because, man, there's so many stupid like AI apps now and a bunch of stuff that's just like totally useless it's a total distraction it might be useful for like me and Khan talk about a bunch of these things like 
VR, whatever. It may be useful in some other context, but not for our clients and not to create a, like efficiency or, or profit or scalability. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Okay, so let's follow up on that. Yeah, how we cement that into our, you know, steps moving forward. Yeah. Oh, okay, I've taken up enough of your time, but it's, I hope you, it's been a useful session. Uh, it's been a bit longer than usual, but yeah, thanks for your participation. Thank All you. right.